goodness, will you? Look at that view. <laughs> Having a hard job keeping on the tracks. I'm looking at the view so much. We are just north of Yapoon, central Queensland. You might remember we were here just a little while ago. Well, the place blew us away that much. We decided to stay, have another good look around. And as such, we're calling CQ home for another week or so. Our plan for this trip is to seek out and show you the hidden gems in this region because beyond the main tracks and trails are some truly spectacular places for four-wheel drivers to experience. With this in mind, we're going to begin our adventure on a track called Pistol Gap. Then we're going to head to Lake Mary for one of the best campsites you've ever seen. From there, we're going to tackle some tracks in the Kuwonga area, take a visit to the Kurana Croc Farm, looking forward to that, and then we're heading through Byfield National Park and onto Stockyard Point. Yeah, that sounds like an amazing trip, and it's one that you could do with your mates or with your family. Right now, I'm here with old mate Barney from Legend X, and we're already enjoying the heck out of this area. There's plenty of bog up ahead, mate. Uh, I'll give it a bit of stick, and uh, I'll follow you with the trailer, buddy. We're actually on our way out to meet up with Shauna, who went out a bit earlier to do some reckies on the tracks. However, he's run into a bit of a problem. Yeah, he's broken down on the side of the road. Hey Barney, here he is. Gotta look good, he's got his bonnet up. Mate, he's always got that bonnet up. What's he up to? I uh, know, he's waved us down. We'll fuck up, mate. Go and say good day. Oh, mate, uh, he's probably swinging us the wrong spanners again. That's his problem. Let's go and find out, mate. Let's not judge. We'll go and find out. I'd like to say that's not a common sight, mate, but nothing to see in here, mate. What's going on in there? The coolant keeps pressurising and goes into the overflow. And um, look, I'm going to assume worst case scenario, head gasket. So you're out? No, 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 no. I'm um, definitely not missing this trip, mate. I've been looking forward to this one for ages. It hasn't got hot yet. Okay. I'm just going to keep the water up to it, keep All the right. cooling up to it. Oh, you don't want to miss this one, mate. This is the Hidden Gems. I can't CQ, wait. CQ, Hidden Spots. I can't spots. wait. Exactly my second home up here, so. Oh, you should know a few of these spots then. I do. Yeah. All right, so you're keen to get going? It's all right, Barney's going to tow the trailer? Yeah, All right, let's right. do this. Let's, let's go. go on the tracks. We're going to hit a track called Pistol Gap. Time to get moving. Well. This looks very interesting, she's rutted out. Pistol Gap Track is a U-shaped section of low range gnarliness that begins and ends on the same main track. And this is fantastic because what it means is that you can tackle Pistol Gap from either direction. It's super important here, of course, to pick your right line, get it wrong. You can either hit that tree root and do a lot of panel damage or worse still, this is steep enough that you could go over. Let's give that another go here. Jono has got so much flex in that truck of his that really this won't be much of a problem for him either. He's just got to take it nice and gentle, keep an eye on that passenger side. Doesn't want to do any panel damage. Of course, suspension plays a big role in these parts of the world. And as you can see, it's flexing like mad and really doing its job and doing its job well. Barney's had the advantage of seeing both of us go through first and he's decided just to take a slightly wider angle on this track. Ooh, this is going to be a bit trickier. Of course, that's so he can get the trailer past that tree root. Look how well that trailer's handling it, for goodness sake. This really isn't a track you'd normally take a trailer down, but we're testing and testing as hard as we possibly can. Oh, and the trailer. Oh, she's... <laughs> Have a look at the smile on Barney's face. He's loving this. Wow, that was fun. Whoa. Hey, uh, Sean, you got a copy? Yeah, mate. Dude, this is savage. Um, you got this on your VMS? Yeah, I'm just looking at it now, mate. It's um, just a little, looks like a loop track off Pistol Gap. Holy heck, I might jump out and have a look on that VMS, mate. This thing is, uh... yep. Yeah, mate, some of the locals are telling us this is um, one of the tougher tracks in central Queensland. I'm just gonna mark it on the GPS, actually. You got it on there, mate? Absolutely, mate. Just right here off Pistol Gap. See that's a little, uh, yeah. little loop track? Yeah, exactly right. Some of the locals say this is a really hard track. Have so. you got the exit? Well, I don't, so I'm just going to mark a little yeah, waypoint. Good call, just to catch me stuck in there for days, mate. At a waypoint at the location. Okay. Done. All right. Looks sweet. I'm going to head down. You lead. See how um, we go. I'll follow. Okay. The idea here is just to descend as slowly as you possibly can in a controlled manner. Good line. Pretty good line. You sure? not going to rock into that. The entry on you this sure? side is super gnarly. It's really steep going in, off camber to the passenger side, and of course, 
there's a great big tree root you've got to look out for. There was that much in that. Thanks, mate. That's where we have good spotters out front. There was that was good spotting because there was literally. I just I could see that stump on my door. If in doubt, chuck your mate out. That's what I always say. That's very tight. That is, by goodness. Oh, geez, tree, look out. Oh, what was that? <laughs> Sean O's up next, and of course, with the amount of flex he's got in that raw suspension, the bigger tyres, bigger lift, this won't even feel like a rock step. In fact, I reckon this will feel like he's climbing down the Pacific Highway. <laughs> he's still having a ball though, look at him. He lives for this stuff. Yeah, Biddy mate, when you're ready, come on down. Barney's up. Number one thing he's got to watch here, of course, is coming off these rock steps and making sure that the trailer comes down nice and gently. <laughs> that sounds scary. <laughs> We got through that gap. This hidden gem of a track is turning out to be an absolute cracker. Some really fun technical driving. Pretty gnarly, dude. Don't know about taking the trailer's gonna be a real challenge here. Yeah? However, check this out. Right up in front, we're faced with a nasty little challenge. Is that just a little gully straight up and down, is it? Yeah, mate, literally straight up and down. Um, I'll ease into it and we'll see, see how we go. Have a go at this. This is, of course, the sharpest, steepest little creek crossing you'll ever see. Yeah, that's me, dude. That's you. You're not even down yet. Correct. Hook up a winch, bro. We'll just winch us up the other side. Why are we putting that winch cable up so high? The reason being that yep. if it was down low, it would be pulling the front of the four-wheel drive down to the ground. What we want to try and achieve here is to pull the four-wheel drive up. And that's where that extra elevation from putting the winch cable up high will come in. You're not, you're not getting out. That made some good noises. That was insane. <laughs> the bull bar just came straight on with the bank and literally we had to pull it up. We put the winch nice and high to literally pull him up over the bank. But check out the scraping. We've got pretty tough bash plates, so no damage at all. Just a um, little bit of dirt on the bull bar. I thought it was going to be harder than that. And as you can yep. see, that's worked well. Okay, Sean O's up. Let's see how he goes. All right, this is going to be one heck of a challenge. So tight, so many trees. I want to take this on an angle, but I don't even think I'm going to keep saying that. Once again, Sean has taken it real easy coming in and then gives it a bootful on the way out. <laughs> the vehicle's just stuck. And then suddenly, something's just gone bang. Is that something broken? That was a good sound. Nasty. I have a winch, mate. That's a handy tree, isn't it? Yeah, there was a large bang just then, big crunch sound. It came from, I thought, the passenger side front. Might just be a hub. Could be something really, really simple like a hub. So we'll just winch him up this and we'll have a look at it. Assess the situation. Let's hope it's a hub, fingers crossed. Once again, we're gonna put that winch cable up nice and high and make sure we're using everything to our advantage to pull the truck up and out of that valley rather than pull the front down to the earth. It makes a huge difference. Right up. You probably heard that bang just before. Suspicions are confirmed, broken hub. You can actually see the casting is cracked. While we figure out how we're going to get Barney and the trailer through this challenge, Sean's going to go and get to work and put a spare hub on. All you, bud. Try and swing it into that gap. I oh, know. I'm just going to come forward. Forward? <laughs> More forward. That's it. I can't see nothing. Start turning. Keep it going. That's it. Follow it around. That's it. Well done. Keep going. That's you, bud. That's it. That's it. Oh, there's not going to be much in it. We've got this. We've got this. You've got it. You've got it. It's all you. Yeah. <laughs>
And that is some seriously skilled guidance by yours truly. Or it might have had something to do with Barney's skilled manoeuvring. Either way, he's through. <laughs> good work, mate, good work. Hey guys, a couple of lines here, left and right. I reckon um, I might even have a go at the right one. It seems a little bit quicker and a little bit more fun. Have a go, mate. I'll meet you at the bottom. Actually, I'll race you to the bottom. It's quite a rock step. Of course, Sean has seen this and he wants to have a crack at it. This is exactly what he set his truck up for, and these are the kind of conditions he loves trying out. Oh, look at that. These big steps are all about picking your line and then taking it controlled and slow. Not too bad at all. Go too fast and get out of control on these, you're definitely 100% gonna do panel damage. Get up there. Get up there, you dog. Yeah, good to that 80 sound. Hoo-ha. Nice drive. Make it look easy, champ. Well done. Having completed the loop track and pistol gap, we're now on the open road again to head to Lake Mary. And what a spectacular time of day. Well mate, it's that time of day. What do you reckon we head to camp? You know any spots around here, bud? Yeah, I certainly do, mate. A fantastic little place, not far from here, in fact. Right on the side of a river. You're gonna love it. Oh, mate, it's a new experience trying to camp a trailer. It's been awesome. But I'm looking forward to a coldie when we get to camp. Yeah, keep on going, mate, just up here. Will you feast your eyes on this? This has got to be one of the best campsites I've ever seen. And right here is another of the hidden gems of this region, and we get to call it home for the night. It's day two of our central Queensland adventure, and we're waking up here at the beautiful Lake Mary campground. We've got a few battle scars, but all is forgiven when you get to experience places like this. There you go, a couple of nice strong coffees. Got a little thing I picked up at the supermarket. Coley Oxal. Softener and laxative. That's it, that's it. It's gonna be a fun day out on the tracks. I'll stir that up for him. He'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Quickly dissolves. Hey Graham! Yeah mate! Coffee's up mate. You just like it black, don't you? You, you make me a cup of coffee. Yeah mate. It's mine. It's yours. Sure isn't. Ah. Hot, mate. Cheers, bud. That's a yeah. weird thing for you to do. Well, I always make it. Oh, someone's gonna make someone a coffee. I Never thought, mate, today I might start. It's, um, it's really hot. It's really hot. It's nice coffee, though. It's um, pretty strong. I don't know you like it strong. But a big day on the tracks anyway, mate. Um, I think today's plan is just, just keep hitting those tracks. We'll go further in the bush. Um, yeah, mate, what yeah. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? 100%. All right, well, I'm gonna get packed up. Um, enjoy your coffee, bud. And um, yeah, I'll start packing this down and we'll get into it. Okay. Off we go for an awesome day's driving. We're heading out towards Kuwonga. Hey lads, I hope you're well rested. Um, we got some tracks coming up today. The locals have given us a few heads up, uh, which I think is always a good thing. You get a bit of local knowledge. I'm told <laughs> there's a couple of testing obstacles out here. Yeah, mate, that's what a couple of the boys reckon. That the local, there's a few hard tracks. Barney, you up for it, mate? Yeah, mate, it's been a ton of fun with the trailer, so I'm really looking forward to what you're going to throw at me today, buddy. So, hey, Graham, how'd you sleep, mate? You feeling well? Buddy, I slept, uh, I actually slept really well last night. It was a bit windy, I woke up a few times, but um, no, mate, I slept real well. Mate, I'm amped, I'm pumped, I'm ready to rock and roll. It's not too far into the journey, and I got something I desperately need to take care of. Hey, Sean, you got a copy? Yeah, got gotcha, you, mate. Yeah, mate, I just got to, uh, I got to pull up for a second, mate. Yeah, cool, mate. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just be five, mate. Yeah, coffee, mate. I'll um, just pull over here. Oh, it's gonna be a long day for Graham. Pretty soon, and we've arrived at Kawanga, and the tracks we've got planned are part of a locals-only area. Bit of an S bend here, Barney. This is an extremely tight turn with very little margin for error now. Both Sean and myself, this will be easy. Just hook it straight around with little bother at all. It might have been best to go straight up there rather than try and turn around that tree. Yeah, I'll go straight up and then hook it back. Yeah, 
As you can see, he's done the smart thing. Rather than try and turn, he's come straight up that bank to give himself plenty of room to reverse and take another bite at it. You've got to be able to back a trailer, I tell you what. Yeah, that's good work. But even with that, he's got to do a bit of gardening to get forward. <laughs> He's done it, I can't believe it. That, though, is an inspired drive. Good on you, Barney. That's right, a bit of panel damage on the Hilux, but uh, the trailer's uh, unscathed, I think. What have we got up ahead, Graham? It looks uh, even harder for me again. Not as tight, but, um, gee whiz, I hope you like hills. This next challenge is actually quite easy in execution, but to look at it, wow, it's daunting. It's almost a vertical ascent, about three truck lengths long. Really, for me, I'm going to have a bit of a scratch at it first and see how it feels, and then I'm going to give it the berries. There you go. Attempt number one is just so I could find out how it feels, and I know for sure I'm going to get stuck into it and get straight up it. There you go. Go the D-Max. Sean O's up in the 80. No dramas. Straight up it like a rat up a drain pipe. I don't think there's any technique needed for this hill for the old trailer. I think Barney's just gonna have to lock, stomp and steer here. It's just straight up, it's just that rock step that's gonna cause problems. But I think I think I reckon Barney's got this. I reckon he'll drive it. Good luck! I reckon this U-turn's gonna be a big enough problem for me, fellas. The main problem we've got right here, it's all these trees that are scattered around exactly where Barney needs to be maneuvering the trailer. You see, he needs to position himself for a good run up into this steep climb. Can I keep going on that line? Yeah. Now he's got a good position for the run up this hill. Barney's got plenty of power in that truck of his, and I think he's going to have to use every single bit of it to get up that hill. He's got the power, but he's just lacking traction. You can see it right there. Hello? Winton. That's a good effort, mate. Real good effort. With the trailer on the back. Yeah. Too much slip. Yeah, no, there's no traction there at all. You guys took it away from me. Yeah. My fault. I apologise. Yep. Alright. Locked and loaded. Let's get out of here. What we've made sure we've done here is run that winch out far enough that Barney can make it all the way up the hill and not have to stop halfway. So we reposition the winch and that's really important. Finally he's up. All right, let's see what else this track can throw at us. That will do, Donkey. We've just got this one last challenge to go before we head out to the Kurana Croc Farm. Okay, stop there, mate. Once again, this is a short, sharp, off-camber and rutted little hill. Ordinarily, I wouldn't look at this with too much trepidation, but these ruts are exactly a wheel width apart, and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get around them, but we're going to give it a red-hot shot. And there you go, I'm up. Yay! And now for Shauna. As you can see, he's having a few wheel placement issues too. Well done. Almost, mate. I might have to give it a little bit more um, stink right at the top. Give it a bit of stink, mate. Give it some. A little bit more, eh? And there he goes. He's done it. That's good work, mate. Okay, let's see what Barney's got. Good mate, give it hell. Sure as well do, mate. I'll put my berserker on for you. Here he goes, he's lining up. Whoa, oh, oh, suddenly. Whoa! Oh. What happened there, mate? <laughs> what just happened? Too much bounce? Oh, 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 it has certainly gone pear-shaped for Barney. Did we want to like bounce over that or do we want to like drive those lines that were there? Oh, I got confused and excited all at once. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What's he gone and done? I think you went a little bit too hard too early. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Did, 
goes to show how quick it can all go wrong. Barney's just jumped on the right foot. He's come a little bit, I suppose, unsteady with the trailer on the back and it's just gone sideways into a tree. It happens so easy off road and he's made a bit of a mess, mate. Look at this. Down the tyre too, which is a bit of a shame. I don't think you've done a sidewall, so you might be able to jack that up, pump some air back in, winch it out from this tree and yep. um, done. Then, then um, have another go, mate. Yeah. <laughs> have another go. All right, let's get to work. Let's go out. The winch is being used here to put the four-wheel drive into a better position. Not only that, it's also acting as a safety line to prevent the four-wheel drive from moving. Real general, Barney. Just want to see what happens. What I'm going to do here is just basically lift the vehicle up so we can get the thumper onto the tyre. Hopefully we'll be able to just put that tyre straight back on the wheel. Um, it doesn't look like he's done any damage to the tyre itself. It's just low pressures around the corner with too much speed. Takes the rubber straight off the wheel. So hopefully, not to change the tyre, just lift it up and put it straight on. Recoveries like this really are all about safety. It's not steep here, but it's certainly steep enough for that four-wheel drive to move once we get the jack out. And that is the last thing we want. The winch is being used perfectly to hold the vehicle in position and create stability so that we can repair this tyre and get Barney back on the track. There you go, mate. Tyre's back on. All good, mate. We'll jack him down and get you the rest of the way up the hill. Yeah. Now that Barney is back on all four wheels, he's going to have a shot at driving the rest of this track. got the grunt, but he's having trouble with traction here. It's out with the winch again. It's a fairly big weight on the winch, but again, Barney should be able to help it along with a bit of throttle and find just that little bit of traction to help out. All right, mate, I'm ready when you are. However, look at that, he's got problems again. That winch has stopped working. What's happened here is Barney's winch has given up at exactly the worst moment. Something electrical, I think, because I saw a bunch of sparks come out from under his grill. Um, it could have something to do with the fact that we hit that tree with a bull bar and it might have pinched one of the wires. But it, either way, it's too dangerous to have a look now. So I'm going to get the 80 around and um, hook the Grande up, just pulling straight up, hopefully. It's a big pull, and the problem is it's so steep and shaly that traction's going to be pretty hard to find. Give it a go. With Sean positioned up the top near a tree so he doesn't get pulled back down the hill, he's going to winch Barney and the trailer up. You just pull me up and I'll give it a little bit of drive. Right, I'm winching now. Here they go, fingers crossed. Good old Grande. Never ceases to amaze me, this little winch is a little winch that could. It's pulling Pilux and a trailer, both not driving. Doing good. It's just working. What you want to do in winch situations like this is go for 30 seconds and then just let it have a rest. That um, drum really starts to heat up when you just continually winch. That's how people burn winches out. Doesn't matter what the brand is, you'll burn them out if you don't give them a break. Yeah, Barney's going to get that winch a rest. That's a really good tip, Shawno. All right, mate, I'll start winching again. Okay, uh, might just hold it there. Do a reset, will you? Oh, I got the brakes on hard, champ, you reset it. Sean needs to reposition to get Barney up the rest of the way. Are you gonna try and reverse time me, or are you gonna actually winch me? No, I'm trying to get the winch and the throttle at the same speed. All right, I'll have a winch now. Just about out of that rise, I should be right once I get past that. Yeah, man, for sure. I can drive from here. Thanks for the help, champ. That is good work, guys. Really good. There we go, mate. We got it through. Yeah, mate. Bit tight, a few spots, uh, particularly early for me. <laughs> no, that was wild, mate. Full of adventure. That's why I like driving with you, Barney. Yeah, mate. Thanks for inviting me, mate. So I do quite enjoy your help on that last bit of winch. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a good little hill, man. What do you reckon we go back down, join Graham, and uh, keep on trucking? Yeah, mate. If you got anything harder, I'll be up for that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, easy. Beach easy, be good. Onward we go to a place I've been really excited to visit. It's just amazing to see these creatures up close and personal. We're down here at the Karana Crocodile Farm just outside Emu Parks. And if you've never met one before, you probably don't want to. There's a little croc. How old will this one be? About three years old About now. three years old. Yep. Saltwater croc? Yep. Do you reckon I can have a hole? <laughs> yeah, sure mate. Around just, the head. Yep, right around the head there. Yep, nice good grip. Yep, and around, underneath here. Yep, straight out of the Oh, look at you, you little... Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Rocky <laughs> Moses! What's that all about? Nobody mentions that! Like chicken. Oh. oh man! I may, I may or may not have just done a little wee. You've got your daily dose of brown. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Nobody asked me if I'm alright. Can we go see something a little bigger? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Done, let's go.
The old Karana Croc Farm has been around a long time. You see, it was established in 81. It's owned by John and Lillian, and they've worked hard to bring this croc farm from three or four crocs in the early 80s to a normal carrying capacity of, check this out, 3,000 crocs today. I urge you, come and say good day to the boys, especially the big boys. This here is Rocky. He's literally the pride and joy of Rockhampton. He's over five metres long and weighs over a tonne. He's 38 years old. And when he was in the water, Adam was saying you see about 15% of their body. When, when you see them go in the water down here, you, they can be right next to the edge of that bank and you can't see a thing. And we go fishing the creeks in Cape York. I think we need to have a head thread, mate. Holy heck. What? He's a big one. He's a big fella. Really? And apparently the scary thing is he's still got some growing to do. Holy heck. What do you reckon, mate? We buckle up on the four-wheel drives and... I, I think we stay in the four-wheel drives. No. <laughs> Don't swim, that's Every for sure. Every man that gets bogged is a man for himself. <laughs> that is seriously that's... one impressive beast. Oh, I'm in awe, mate. Good Lord. Okay, with that done, it's time we headed off in the direction of camp that the locals have told us about. Copy, Barney? Yeah, mate, sure do, buddy. Hey, mate, have a look at left and right. This is pretty swampy ground through here, pretty moist. I reckon uh, you'd be pretty good in that rooftop tent tonight, mate, given what we just saw. <laughs> mate, you jumped so high when that thing bit, yeah? Sean, sure, you got any room in the camper? I don't, actually. I've got locks on the door, too, so... What you do after your camper around here, though, is a lot of um, mangrove country around through these tracks, man. And that means what? That means if you get bogged, we'll all get bogged trying to rescue her and we'll leave our cars here for pretty much ever. It's time to give it some berries and get the mud flying. Oh, that looks a bit slippery, mate. This is all about momentum and having a lot of fun. And I am just pointing and shooting. <laughs> Do it! This driving is about as much fun as you can have in a four-wheel drive. Oh, she's a bit slippery, isn't she, boys? We've got to keep punching on through this to get to our camp yeah. waypoint. And I don't think it's too far now. We've all made it through suddenly, but... Sean, sure, no, copy? Yeah, mate, yep. Yeah, I've just got to, got to stop a second, mate. All right. Yeah, it won't be a minute, mate. <laughs> you, you okay back there, mate? Oh, man. The region of Kawanga is located in coastal hills at the southern end of the Capricorn Coast. It's about six clicks from the Pacific Ocean and the nearest township is Keppel Sands. Oh, look at this. Look at it. Hey, lad, you got a copy back there? Certainly do, mate. Well, we set a riverside campsite. We set a waterside campsite. You go any further than this, I tell you, you'd, you'd get your wheels wet. How perfect is this? Yeah, beautiful, mate. On the banks of the Kuruman Creek, home of Barra, Jew, Muddies. Probably a couple of sandflies, too. No crocs, though. No, oh, no, you don't get them around here. I reckon we put a torch out over this, uh, this creek here. I reckon you'd see some red eyes. No, let's not. I'd rather not know what I've seen. How good is this? Magic, mate. This will do me. We've got the Stony Creek camper set up right on the river's edge, and that's going to be the perfect platform, not only for sleeping tonight, of course, but for Sean O to knock up a meal. I'm starving. Can't wait. We're down here at Karana Croc Farm. Obviously, we've got permission from Adam to come and camp down one of the back paddocks. It's not just any old back paddock. We're backed right onto Kuruman Creek. Just the other side is Zilzi. We've got Emu Park over there. It's a real little hidden gem of central Queensland. And if you get down to this part of the world, really do yourself a favour and come down, visit the croc farm and visit this beautiful part of Queensland. It's absolutely amazing. So what am I going to cook tonight? Well, something, a, a local delicacy. We're cooking up a little bit of crocodile. In fact, I'm going to call it popcorn crocodile because little bits of croc, where's he going? He's straight into the fridge every time you, you, you turn your back on this guy and he's straight into the Waco. Mate, while you're there, yeah. look what's in there. What's this? This is crocodile fillet. Oh, what? We're, Two of those? We're having an that? absolute feast. Uh, what's that pork spare ribs? That's that's crocodile spare ribs. All right, so what we're going to do tonight, we're basically going to make up, you've heard of popcorn chicken, haven't you? Yeah, man. Yeah, popcorn crocodile. That's a good idea. How good is that? Pop and croc. Pop and croc. <laughs> I, like, oh, I like the sound of that. So these ones have been marinated, so obviously we'll just do those straight on a hot plate or something like that. Yep. They'll go down an absolute treat. This one here is just, I think it's tenderloin, in fact. That looks just, superb. Just loin meat, so yep. we'll cut these up into little strip-sized pieces into a hot pan. Boom. It's a real easy dinner. We're going to use about, I don't know, a handful of plain flour. Just put a fair bit in. This is what we'll coat each little bit of croc in and um, a little bit of five spice. Chinese five spice. Five spice in there, of course. Oh, about five shakes of a tail feather. You know, just chuck a fair bit in. And you just want to mix that around. What you got there, mate? Making, making, making the batter, I suppose you'd call it. So we're going to open this one up. Ooh. We both bought these the other day, these fancy knives. It's fantastic. Keeps them sharp. 
So what's the plan here? Well, just open this one up. I want to cut these into like little bite-sized pieces, really. Pardon the can... pun? Oh, because the crocodile, yeah, 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 yeah. nah, yeah. Just pulling apart these loins. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. It's a really nice looking meat, isn't it? It is. It's, it's very white. The whole idea about popcorn croc, mate, is just to make it about the size of popcorn, like big crocodile size. Popcorn. Really big bits yeah, of popcorn, yeah, really right. big. What does a crocodile keep its money? In its purse. No, riverbanks. <laughs> hey, look at this guy. He's here all night, fellas. <laughs> all right. Well, that's starting to get starting to get nice and warm. Wait, we'll let that heat up, and at the same time, I can make. A little bit of the Perrinay sauce. So to do this real easy, get yourself a good squirt of mayonnaise. That's probably about a half, uh, uh, not quite a half half mix, but you've got a fair old bit of mayonnaise, a bit of peri peri. You've had a good old stir. There we go. There's our sauce. How good is that? Try that. Tastes just like peri peri mayonnaise. Not even just. While I'm here, I'll just put a couple of little chilies in there. We're going to do with a little spice up. How cool is this? Using locally sourced crocodile from the farm. It's pretty unique if you ask me. There we go, that's all done. I put a little bit of extra fire spice on as well because I don't think I put enough in the batter. So what I'm gonna do is just chuck them straight in the hot oil. Looking good, mate. mate. How's that look? You can smell it. Oh. oh my goodness. Yeah. That really does. Make sure that you leave them to sit until the juices start to come through the top. So at the moment there's flour on top. When the juices start coming through the crocodile, you flip it once, it'll be nice and golden brown. Sweating, I think is the term. But when you cut it, it'll be a bit like pork. It'll be kind of stringy in a way. Like but pork? Yeah, like pork. It's a weird animal. It's, it's Leaves under the water, looks like chicken, tastes Absolutely. like pork. That is just Mate, mm, so good. That just smells good as oh. well. I, you know, had those been the, what was the name of that big Wally today we saw, or was it Brutus, what was his name? King, 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 King Wally. Wally. King Wally, mate. The I reckon King. if we, we could only get one of his ribs on there, it'd be good enough for... It's a sizeable rib, oh, it really is. Insane, that. Obviously these are nice little meat crocodiles. Ah, oh, they're beautiful, look at them. Jesus. Oh, insane. Well, I'll get back to popcorn chicken, mate. You yep. get back to your popcorn croc. It's not chicken. Popcorn, popcorn yep. croc, I keep forgetting, mate. We'll keep every day you cook with crocodile, is it? It's not, mate, no. No, oh, it's fantastic. Make it snappy. Well, it's the last little bit of croc there. That's looking pretty good, if I don't say oh, so myself. How are you, man. boys? Look at that! Look at that! That is a poppin' croc. See what it's like, see what it's like. You know what? Try a little bit of that. Mm. Seriously. Oh my god. Man! That's blowing me away. Mm -hmm. Just how good that crocodile is. And look guys, if you don't have crocodile on hand, because let's face it, not everyone does, you could do the same with, with chicken, you could do it with pork, with fish. We're just very privileged tonight because we've got croc, and I reckon one of the most underrated meats I've ever tried in my life. Oh, oh, totally. Have a, have a go at a rib. See what I think. <laughs> and you've, you've cooked it to perfection, dude. That is fantastic. Honestly, it's Barney, nice, you've done a great job. Nice, crunchy sort of skin right. on the side of it. No, Can we stop because Barney's oh, going to eat it all? You're going to eat it all. I'm know, taking this. Go. Grab it. Grab that. Grab that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm one more hand. <laughs> What an epic camp to wake up to. Another gem right on the banks of the Kuruman Creek. I reckon we uh, get packed up. All right, sounds good, mate. It's all Either a good way. option around here. CQ, let's, let's pack up it. get out of here. Once we're packed up and ready to go, we're going to point in the direction of Byfield National Park and the coast. Well, I reckon a little bit of research paid off there. That's one of the better campsites I've had overlooking the water there. Yeah, mate, really pays to speak with the locals, mate. I reckon they've got the best information on local areas and um, if you can get into their heads and get the secret spots. Yeah, I mean, you can look at the guidebooks, you know, you can you can go by what other people have said that have been up at locations before, but really it is the locals that know the area the best, isn't it? Hey, Barney, how are you going with that trailer, mate? You haven't really complained or said anything, you're just doing it? Mate, I hardly even notice it's there. I'm not sure whether it's the grunt I got or just how light that thing is, but uh, it looked fantastic when she was set up last night. Ooh wee Yeah, we've got a little off-camber thing here, folks. This track right here looks to be part of an old water course or an old river. During the wet season, I'd imagine this would just flood full time. Now, however, there's not a great deal of water in here, but it is superbly rutted out. It's all about picking your line and coming in here with all four wheels as high as you can possibly get them. Slide down into some of these ruts and you're sure to do panel damage. What I'm trying to do here, of course, is keep an eye on Shawno up the front. He can see more than I can, but Shawno can't feel what I can feel. And I felt the back end drop in there, so I knew that was the time just to give it a bit of throttle and come down gently in to the main body of the rut. I'm in a river, Daddy. Bit of a rut here. Sean 
Jono's got all the flex in the world through here. I don't think he even realised there was a rut there. That flex a big girl out. So it really pays to have decent suspension on your vehicle. Flex your way through things like that. Keep all the wheels on the ground. You get ultimate traction. It makes full wheel drive and a lot of fun. Alright, I've got Sean up the front. And we've decided I'm going to try and take the high line, which is my right hand driver's side through here. Yeah, come on through, mate. I'm just going to go real slow. And pretty soon, we're on what looks like a typical Cape York challenge right here in central Queensland. Check this out. This is just one great big it, long off camber rut. Now, the entry is ugly. I'm going to try and come around and stay high on the right hand side before dropping in and having a drive. Pretty much worked exactly as I thought. I've slid in and gently, ever so gently, nuzzled up against that passenger side bank. I'm in the hole. I'm in. That's, that's good, that knocked off quite a bit. Yeah, you just saved 50 metres of winching. And hey, that actually worked remarkably well. I've knocked off half of this challenge by doing what I just did then, by staying high, and uh, quite gracefully slid back into the hole too. Uh, it, it didn't feel great, I've got to say. And I reckon if I hadn't got grip, uh, it could have been awkward. But uh, I just slid straight in and now, I'm going to hang in here for the big, the big winch to freedom. It's a heck of an angle. The recovery plan here, of course, is to winch myself forward. I'm the first one in this rut, so I've got all the mud to contend with. What I don't want to do here is panel damage on that passenger side. I'm about to destroy the entire side of this vehicle. There's the mud. Nah, up against the bank, dude. I'm going to smash the everything off it. I think we're going to lose this entire side panel. It's backwards or heaps to the right. We've got to position the winch far and hard to the driver's side to pull me away from that bank, but at the same time, pull the D-Max forward. That's really helping the situation. It's moving the D-Max away from that left-hand bank, so I'm not actually touching, no panel damage is occurring, but at the same time, I'm being pulled forward. It's one heck of a challenge. That worked. Here we go. This is a proper little mud trench. It's that sort of stuff you get in it. It's just bottomless. Probably no choice but to winch, but if I can get into a good position first, I've got half a chance of making this easier for myself and everyone else. Sean's going to take exactly the same plan as myself here. Come up wide on the right hand side, drop in and then give it the berries. There he goes, he slid sideways into the trench perfectly. He got a little bit further, but the mud's just held him up there as well. He's going to need a bit of a winch and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Winch to the right and pull the 80 away from that bank. This mud is thick, but the beauty of it is that with each truck going through, we're clearing it out of the way, and there's actually a ridiculously hard bottom. No, you get a, you get a rush of blood every now and again. It's moving. Keep it going! Keep it going! Here you go, look at that. He's found some traction, given it mumbo, and he's managed to drive the last bit. That's epic, mate. <laughs> How good's this truck? Oh! It sounded so fat too. Mate, that was that, that animal. Hey what a vehicle. What a vehicle. You can go <laughs> look, mini high five, I'm in the rut. That's just a rut from that's heck. That's deep, that's deep. There is a bit of traction if you yeah. go deep enough. She's rock solid down oh, the bottom. No yeah, that's right. No, I think you'll right. be right, Barney, but I, I don't know if I'd take the trailer through here, mate. No, actually oh. I don't want you to take the trailer, it's my bed. No. That's a good point. Right. Take the trailer through, Barney. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's easy, it takes about 30 seconds to unhook. Just yeah, unhook it. it. Leave it up there. I won't get muddy when I set up tonight. How about that? Too easy. Yeah, we can go, finish mate. this track yeah. and um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you get right. it right. up again. Let's unhook that trailer and send and send the main berserker man through. But, but, but. <laughs> yeah, that's deep. <laughs> We've actually found a chicken track around this rut, but Barney being Barney, he wanted to have a crack at driving the challenge. Right, mate, you are free to fly. Great. Let's Ooh. leave it here. It only took 30 seconds. Jump in this bad boy. Let's do it. Right. Let's go. Right. I'm going to get out of the way because I reckon you got this. Go Barney. Go, Barney. Go, Barney. Go, Barney. Barney's gone in exactly the same as us, giving it the berries, and there's that hard bottom I was telling you about. Third car through, easy. Whoa, come on! Woo! <laughs> that is a good drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> oh no. Barney, you got a copy? Hey Barney, look at me. <laughs> Have a look at yourself, Barney. Look at this, Barney. Good work, Barney. Come up here. Barney! Barney. Hey, There's nothing left on that side of the car. <laughs>
Barney, I suggest you have a good long look at yourself, mate. <laughs> what do you see there? Zerka man. Zerka man. <laughs> nah, good drive, mate. Honestly, honestly, good <laughs> top drive, mate. Nah, I've got a few of those spare. Yeah, that one. That's all right. You can, you can, you can, re you can replace mirrors. You can't replace glory. You can't replace oh, Zerka. You can't. <laughs> Having survived that awesome track, we're about to visit another gem of this region. Yeah, mate, there's a little little place I want to show you, mate. I'm um, bringing your thongs, that's all I'm going to say. Which ones, mate? The uh, ones I wear on my feet? No, G-Banger, mate, G-Banger. <laughs> this little part of the world right here is called Stony Creek. It's one of the sickest little rivers I've ever seen. It's crystal clear. Right here at my feet, there's one, two, three, Ooh. four turtles. There's a whole heap of gudgeons. Well, Sean, I doesn't reckon they're gudgeons, what are they? No, there's gudgeons and there's rainbow fish. Rainbow fish. Look at this little dude. He might pop up here. Yeah, I'm going in. You're going to swim? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. If you ever get up here, Stony Creek. In fact, there's a wicked campsite just across the road here. Stay for a week. Swim every day if you don't freeze to death. You imagine summertime when it's real hot ah. and you can't really swim in the ocean because everything wants to bite you and eat Sting you, eat you, yeah. Yep. Down this here is, the is absolute paradise. This is just one of the sickest spots I've ever seen. Heaps of native fish in here, turtles. There's a native whale. He's having a swim. <laughs> Fresh, not salt, no crocs. You can just imagine this spot, middle of summer up here. Can't swim in the ocean because things will bite, sting, bash, beat, and kill you. Jump in here. You've only got to worry about one deadly fish in here, apparently. What's that called? That's the whale fish. The whale fish. <laughs> he gets out, though, after a while. Too deadly. <laughs> no, there are bull routes here. Bull route. It's called the bull route. Don't fish Central Queensland, can't swim in the oceans, can't swim in the freshwater. Right now we're back on another track that will take us down to pick up the trailer. However, it seems to be holding a lot of water on this section. Time for some action. You can see we're getting close to the coast now mate. I think it's been a bit of fun to unhitch that trailer but I'm enjoying this. With a bit of momentum, we're all able to push our way up this track. Yeah, way to rock and roll. We'll go and pick her up though, Barney, because we've got a couple more things to finish on, mate. What's that other lookout point there, Shire? Oh, down the Stockyard Point, mate. That's absolutely sensational down there. i got to tell you, this is so much fun. All right, water hole. Time for a bit of momentum. We're all concentrating here to stay in the wheel ruts and ride them out. This track reminds me of something you'd get right up in that Cape York area. These puddles, the paper barks, the swampiness, it's got all the hallmarks of Cape York. <laughs> Pretty soon, we've picked up the trailer, it's time to head to the coast. See hey Barney, you drive that Spartan hard mate. Yeah, mate, I love getting more power from a cool engine. I don't have the stress because my big boy intercool is fully reliable and it's going to keep my engine cooler and give me a lot more power right when I need it. Obviously, that uh, big boy intercooler, mate, she's holding up real well. How does it differ from other intercoolers? Yeah, mate, the big boy intercoolers are designed smarter by Aussies. Stronger, custom-made alloy end tanks. Welded tanks, not cast from China. Aussie-made tube and fin, not that cheap Chinese bar and plate stuff, mate. Makes it a smarter design with man-sized plumbing to get to the ultimate flow dynamics to help the engine stay cooler for longer. Sounds amazing, mate. How's the fuel economy in that big rig? Yeah, mate, not only better fuel, but get a longer engine life because it's more efficient hey. cooling air. But the great news is better towing off-road and up those hills. Woo! Come on, get into it, baby! Got a big sandy coming up here, boys. We've all dropped our tyres. I've got the D-Max running at 18 all around, and I believe the other guys have gone even lower. You've done a good job with that camper trailer this trip, Barney. Good work, mate. Mate, I thoroughly loved it, and this hill is a lot of fun as well. The D-Max is in second gear, low range, in the manual selection. I'm on the throttle, but not too much because I don't want wheel spin. We're pushing our way out towards Stockyard Point, but this section of track could be a battle. Uh, However, Barney's got the trailer on and he's hit a particularly soft section of sand and he's gone down. Hey Sean, I think I'm going to stop here. <laughs> it shouldn't take too much to get him moving again, so Sean's decided to link Barney up for a snatch. 
Here they go. Uh, here you go, John. I need the help. Barney is, of course, also helping by giving it some throttle. Come on, give us some more, boy. They're doing it. Sean's got the traction he needs to get the momentum up and continue towing Barney all the way to the top. Look at the left suit. Get that suit going. Give me more. Give me all you got. <laughs> Yahoo! I can't even see the windscreen. I need to have a watch. Yeah! That's good work, guys. The shorty delivery van. <laughs> And here we are, we've arrived on the Capricorn Coast and it's as beautiful as ever. Sweet jeepers, have a look at that. That's gotta be one of the better, oh, it's on the left and the right. That's gotta be one of the better views you'll see. Yeah, mate, it's absolutely sensational here. Stockyard Point, look at it. Seriously, you can see from right to left as far as the eye can go, it's awesome. Stockyard Point. It's the final gem that we wanted to show you in the central Queensland region. And what a cracking place to finish this adventure. Central Queensland, you've blown me away. I love it. CQ, if you've never been up here, you've got to try now. Big up to yourself for making it all the way through with a blown head gasket. You don't know it's a head gasket yet. Oh, pretty, pretty, just, pretty, I'm pretty convinced yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to make it this far, and even the effort you just gave just to get Barney up through here with the old what, 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 so up the hill. hundred k's off a lot. Mate, sure. I tell you what, I've seen, I've read about Chernobyl. <laughs> the gas cloud that was left behind when you got up that hill would equal it. Barney, though, you did a great job, mate, pulling that little camper. Oh, it was good. It was a great fun. I enjoyed it. Thanks so for coming. Anytime you want to pull a bed for me, just say, mate. I'll yeah. let you, you can tell it anywhere you like. Yeah, Folks, great. Central Queensland, we've got five rocks down here behind us. That's Nine Mile Beach. Guessing that's about nine miles long. About nine miles long, mate. <laughs> Bit further you poon than Emu Park, Crocodile Farm up there. Mate, I tell you what, oh, how cool are the crocs? Ah, oh, so, so good, good, mate, so I, good. Uh, I had it's a manly huge. moment. I think there's a lot of little hidden gems around yeah. the central Queensland region. If you look hard yeah. enough, you'll find them. Yep. We and certainly found a few. Definitely ask the locals. That's Because the they know everything. They know everything the about this place up here. As for us, I know a really cool local spot. What, is that the strand down at your poon? <laughs> down at your poon? <laughs> what do you there. say? Beers, you're by, mate. 100% your shout. Then. Folks, you know it by now, you might catch us at the Strand in your poon if you do buy us a beer. If not, see you next time on Little Drive Action. You. You. Oh, hey, King Graham, how are you, mate? He's from the Crocodile Tribe. <laughs> there you go, mate. It's good, mate. It's the Outback legend here. Yeah, I figured this, I figured so much since you're wearing a crocodile right in there. Yeah, mate, I just like to slay crocs everywhere I go. Yeah. Alright, come on. Do you pronounce that right? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty steep. Throw it at Barney. It's not going to hurt him much. Like, even if you hit him in the head, it's not going to really do much. Do you want me to throw it at you? No, no throw it at him. back to your boat. I love the fact that Graham had a hissy fit today, and that was it. And I'm like, that was it? That was all you had? You didn't punch anyone? Stay on the tire or something. Throw the ground's going to go ping, ping, ping. Ready? It's all a prank, it never really happened. In case you're wondering at home, is he okay? Yes, we never really did it. It was a joke, it was a prank. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I told you to peg it at him. Yeah, I got scared. Just peg it at him. Our goods recovery gear, wouldn't go bush without it. Hey, Barney. Oh, what was that for? Let's go and have a look at one that really, ah, oh, can't even Tom. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> they fly through the air, they land where there's no hair. They bite and they scratch and they make me very itchy. I got bitten last night. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's not what you do. That's not my advice. Oh. No, you bastard! Whoa! Oh, that happened. There he is. Oh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I need to go change. Oh, oh, yeah. Got me. 